What's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super simple and easy wooden concealment coffee table. Let's get started. All right, so first up, I just got an eight foot two by four and I'm going to cut four legs that are at 18 inches. All right, so we got our legs cut. Now we're going to cut the side pieces. So for the top, I'm going to be using one by sixes and I'm doing one by six so that I got a little bit more room for the container inside. So I got an eight foot stick and a six foot stick. So from the six foot stick, I'll be cutting two pieces at 17 inches and those will be for the short side. And then for my eight foot stick, I'll be cutting two pieces at 38 inches and those will be for the long side. And then I got this one by four right here. Same thing, I got a six foot stick and an eight foot stick and you'll do the same for those you'll cut two at 17, and then you'll cut two at 38. All right, next I got a sheet of the uh, BC plywood. This is the, the 23 by 32, two foot by four foot piece. And I'm gonna cut this to 38 by 15 and a half. All right, so I got my plywood cut and now I'm gonna go ahead and get this top section uh, glued and nailed together. So I got everything just up on the table here and then that way I can push everything and make sure that everything stays nice and flat. And I'll go ahead and glue the seam on the plywood and then I'll glue these corner seams as well. And then you just wanna make sure that you push down, push the plywood down tight to the tabletop uh, whenever you nail. And I just got a 16 gauge nailer. I'll be using inch and a half nails. And then I'll just spread them out every like four to six inches or so around the edge. And then you can just do like four or so in each of the corners. All right, so once you got the box built, we're gonna do the same thing with this lower section, except we're not gonna have the plywood on it. So we can go ahead and get this glued and nailed together and make sure that you put the, uh, the short piece in the right spot and have it on the outside and not on the inside like that. Otherwise they will not be the same size. All right, so now that we got the uh, top and the bottom built. Next, we're gonna take our legs. And then what we're gonna do with these is I just got this hanging over the edge here. And we're just gonna line these up flush with the top. And then I'm gonna go past on the side, uh, just about an eighth inch. I'll have to flip this around so I don't have the, uh, so I don't have that big knotted edge on this side. So we're gonna flush it with the top and then we're gonna have this overhang right here just a little bit. And then I'll hold it there kind of with one hand and then I'll use my other hand and hold this right on the edge and have it, um, I'll hang it down like that just to make sure that we got a nice 90 degrees and to make sure that it's going down straight. And then I'll just tack it in with my, 18 gauge nailer and then once it's tacked on there and it's not going to move i got some inch and a half screws and i'll just pre-drill and then screw in maybe like three of them down the side right here and then i'll go ahead and do that for all four corners All right, so now that we got that top all screwed together, I just went ahead and did uh, four screws and that seems to hold on to it quite well. And then now I got this bottom one set in here. And with this one, I just got it, it's just sitting in here right now, but I got some of these uh, three quarter inch blocks just sitting below it as uh, spacers. And what I'll do is just line it up on each of the corners as best I can with the way the tops are lined up. And I might have to tweak it a little bit. I don't know if it's perfectly square the way it is right now. So might have to uh, do a little bit of tweaking just to get it so that it matches on all sides. And then with this, we're just gonna do the same thing. Uh, you can tack it in with the, uh, with the nailer and then screw it or just go straight to screwing if you think that it'll stay where it is. And these ones, I think two screws should be enough. So go ahead and get these screwed in and I'll probably just move a block around 
move like two blocks around because as you can see right here it's kind of floating and then right now it's like too low on that side so just make sure that you don't not have a block in the right corner and then end up screwing it in uh crooked or something like that all right now we got that bottom put on there and then before we paint this i'm gonna go ahead and fill up these holes just these ones here that are on the bottom just because uh they don't really make sense if this is just a normal coffee table there's not really uh anything that you'd be nailing into right there these ones over here on the other hand uh, i think those ones are fine because that would make sense if you were making this as just a normal coffee table so i'm just gonna fill in these ones that are on the bottom here uh, i just got some of this plastic wood filler and i'm just gonna use as little as i can just to get the holes filled in uh, just so that they won't be super noticeable all right and then whenever those are dry i'm just gonna cruise over them with some 220 grit sandpaper all right so i got those holes sanded down and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'll first just vacuum this out and get rid of any of this uh, dust and whatnot. Get these cleaned off. And then I got this Espresso Satin 2X Ultra Cover Spray Paint. And I'm just going to spray a coat on everything with this. And then once that's dry, I'm going to take my white and go over it. This is just semi-gloss 2X Ultra Cover. And I'm going to go for a look kind of like this so it gives it kind of like a farmhouse you know a little bit of like a weathered look and then so that's just obviously if you spray enough white spray paint on there it'll cover everything up but if you just kind of keep an eye on how much you're putting on there it, it's kind of cool it just shows through some of the grain and just like some of the detail it looks really cool on the knots and then once this was dry i just lightly went around the edges just to uh, bring those out a little bit more but that's just the look that i'm gonna go for on this whole thing i think it'll look pretty cool so we'll go ahead and get this thing sprayed out All right, so I got that all sprayed out. And then, like I said, I just ran some 220 grit sandpaper up these edges just to give them a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a distressed look. And then next, I got some of this uh, one by five. So I got two sticks of eight foot and then I got one stick of six foot. We're gonna rip them at four and an eighth and then we're gonna cut them at 40 and three quarter and then we'll need five of those. So I think I will uh, cut mine first and then rip them, but we'll need five total. So you get two out of the eight footers and then one from the six footer. And then once you get those gut, we're gonna real quick cut four pieces out of this one by three. It's just an eight foot one by three. We'll cut four pieces at 14 and three quarters. All right, so next up we're gonna take our bigger pieces and then I got some glue. Uh, I got my clamps here and I got some inch and a quarter screws. So we're just gonna glue between all of the seams and then I will go ahead and get it clamped and then we're gonna mark, uh, you might wanna do this first actually, you're gonna mark at an inch and a half and then at 14 inches and then you'll do it off of each side and then you'll do it on the top and the bottom. And then 
we're gonna use that to line up these blocks right here. So we'll get everything glued, then we'll go ahead and clamp it, and then you'll have your marks on there. And then what I'm gonna do is just line it up with those marks. And I'm not gonna clamp it super tight, I just wanna get it so that these seams are just tight, but, but don't over clamp it to where all of the boards start to bow because they're just pushing so hard together. Uh, just get it to where they're tight. And then I'll choose a drill and drill some holes through here. And on the top and the bottom, I'll just have two screws going side by side. And then through these metal ones, I'll just have two screws just going along um, side to side this way. And then we'll just do it on all four of those marks. So we can go ahead and get this all glued and screwed together. All right, so we got that all put together. Uh, two things that I forgot to mention is that I did glue under uh, these pieces as well. And then I went ahead and marked these at an inch and an eighth on the top and then on the bottom. And then I just lined that up with the seams. So then that way you can line it up, um, up and down. But now that we got that screwed together, I'm just gonna go through real quick on the face while this glue isn't all the way dry. And uh, just take this little razor blade thing and just scrape off any of the excess glue. Uh, just get as much as I can just so that we don't have to sand it down later on. All right, so I went ahead and let this dry overnight. And as you can see, I got this side clamped down and then I got some weights over on the other side just so that it could dry up uh, as flat as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these things. And then now we can get this flipped over. And then using my orbital sander, um, I'm gonna start with some 80 grit and then I will go from 80 to 180 and then to 240. I'll just mainly use this 80 grit just to try and get some of these, if there's any of these seams where they don't line up perfectly, just try to get rid of those as best I can. And also to get rid of this glue. And then, and then I'll work my way up to the 240. Uh, if I had 220, I'd use that, but I just got 240. So if you got 220, that'll work fine too. And then I'll also go along these edges. If there's any of these that didn't line up perfectly, I'll go ahead and go over those as well. All right, so I just got that initial sand done and we got a nice smooth surface here. Uh, as you can see, most of them turned out nice and tight, but there's just one spot right here where I got some uh, little bit of a gap showing through. So I'm just gonna take my wood filler and fill that in and then I'll see if there's any other spots that I should fill in. Uh, if you don't wanna fill these things in, if you're not worried about it, uh, obviously you don't have to but that's just something I'm gonna fill in real quick. And then once that dries, then I'll go ahead and sand with my finer grits and we can just go ahead and sand that out with the wood. All right, so before we start uh, staining this top piece, I'm also gonna wanna get this bottom piece ready for stain as well so that we can do them both at the same time. So for this bottom one, I'm gonna be using one by five 
and this long distance should be 39 and a half. And then the width of this should be 17. So I'm gonna cut eight pieces at 17 inches. So that should give me 36 inches. So then I should have three and a half inches left. Uh, but I'm gonna cut those eight pieces first and then hold them all out and then just measure just to make sure that I don't cut this piece too short. Cause sometimes one by five, it can be just a little shy or a little over four and a half inches. So then whatever, uh, it is to finish off this edge. I'll just cut it at that. And then I'm going to cut two one by threes at 37 inches. And I'm going to use those just to attach all of the one by fives together. Um, I'll kind of attach them the same way I did the top, except I'm not going to glue between each one. Uh, I'm not as worried about it, but we'll go ahead and get these pieces cut first. So that's nine pieces total of one by five, eight of them will be full pieces. They'll all be at 17 inches. And then that last piece, you're just gonna have to measure, measure out for 39 and a half inches. And then two one by threes cut at 37 inches. All right, so I went ahead and I got those cut. So I actually went uh, 39 and three quarter that way. I'll have just an eighth inch of overhang on each side. And that should stay behind those two by fours, but that way it'd be better to have it overhang on the edges a little bit than to be slightly too short. So I got it at 39 and three quarter. And I'm just gonna put my, my smaller piece right in the middle here. So I'll have four full pieces on either side. And I had to cut this one at uh, three and five eighths. So I had an extra eighth inch on all of these. So when I measured these, it was 36 and one eighth. So just make sure you measure that just so then you don't cut it way too big or too small. And then I also got my one by threes cut here. So what I'm gonna do is just line these up, uh, line all these up as best I can. I'll just put my straight edges on either side just to make sure that they are nice and straight. And then I just have to put these three quarter inches from the edge so that they'll fit uh, inside the one by and then make sure I hold them off the uh, either side equally so that they can fit uh, the one bys that will be on the ends. And then I'll just put some glue uh, under these and then I'll put some on the, si on the uh, face of this and then I'll just go ahead and nail these using my 18 gauge brad nailer. And I'm not gonna worry about clamping these or anything as long as the distance overall is good. Then I'll just go ahead and make sure that they're straight, glue it and nail it. And I think doing it this way will just make it much easier for staining. So we can go ahead, get this all glued and nailed together. All right, so that is what that's gonna look like. Uh, I just used a block as a spacer just to make sure that they were good. And then once it's all stained and everything, it should slide in there uh, just like that. And then it will all just be one piece. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna just gonna do the same thing that I did for the top piece. I'll just go ahead and get it sanded down real nice, except I am not gonna worry about filling in all of these cracks but we'll go ahead and get it sanded. All right, so I got my two boards sanded and ready to go. Uh, first, I'm gonna go over them with some pre-stained conditioner. This is a varathane oil-based. I'll just be using a rag and you just wanna make sure you get uh, a good amount of it on there. And then we're just gonna wipe it uh, with the grain and get a good coat on everything. And then after I'll take like a drier part of my rag and go through and just wipe off any of the extra stuff that's on top so that we try to get like a nice even coat. Uh, without having any dry areas. And then I'll do that on both of these. I'll do it on the sides of these as well. And then we'll have to let that dry for 30 minutes and then we'll be ready to stain. All 
And then one thing you want to remember when you're using oil base is to lay your rags out to dry and make sure they're all opened up. Otherwise, uh, they could start a fire. So that's something you want to be careful for. All right, so I gave those 30 minutes to dry and now I'm going to go ahead and stain them. And for the stain, uh, this will be the same process. This is uh, barthane oil-based wood stain and it's provincial for the color. And it will be the same process as this. You'll just go ahead and wipe over it with a rag. Try get try get a good amount on there and try and get it over it evenly and then wipe off the excess before it dries up. All right, so I'm all done staining. I gave it a whole day to dry just because I'm gonna be using a uh, water-based finish on it. Um, on the oil-based stain, it says, let it dry for eight hours if you're gonna use an oil-based finish and 24 hours if you're gonna use water-based. Uh, so I gave it a whole day to dry just to be sure because I just don't want any uh, wet spots to ruin the finish. Uh, I'm gonna be using this Varathane water-based polyurethane and it says this stuff works best if you do uh, light coats. So I'm going to do four coats total. Um, it says to wait one hour between coats. So I'll do a coat, wait an hour, do another coat, wait an hour, do a third coat, wait an hour. And then it says before your final coat uh, to lightly sand with uh, 220 grit. So after our third coat, after an hour, we're gonna sand it lightly with 220 grit and then we'll do a final coat. And like I said, there's, these are gonna be light coats. You don't wanna put it on there too heavy, otherwise uh, that might cause problems. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get these finished up. And uh, one more thing, make sure you wear a respirator when you're using this stuff, just so you're not inhaling it. All right, so we are all done sealing those. As you can see, I think they turned out super nicely. Uh, they feel really nice too. Uh, this one also turned out real nice. I was able to get away with just one can of it and I got a little bit left over. So as long as you don't spray it on too heavy, uh, you should have enough with just one can. And then one thing I forgot to mention, I think is to make sure that you also get the sides sprayed as well. Uh, don't forget about those. And then before we put the hardware on this, I'm going to go ahead and spray out the inside of this thing white uh, just so that it's not wood color. Obviously, if you just want to leave it wood, you can. Uh, if you want to put foam in the bottom or, or some kind of liner, uh, I think I will put a liner in mine at some point. I just got to figure out what to get, but I think some kind of liner would be cool to put on the bottom. But for now, I'm just going to spray all this inside white, so I'm just going to uh, just cover up these edges put some paper around the edges and then I'll spray that inside white. All right, so I went ahead and I got the inside of this sprayed out and I actually uh, went around and sanded the outsides a little bit more just because I wanted a little bit more of a distressed look to it than what it was. So I definitely like it a lot better now. Uh, I used 220 for some of it and then I switched to 120 and that was working great also. That went a little bit quicker, but yeah, I really like the way it's looking now. But the next thing that we're gonna do is I got my 
uh, hardware here. So this will be to lift the lid up. I can go ahead and link this down in the description. I just got these off of Amazon. They're like, I think it's like $19 for a set. So they're not too badly priced. And what they do, this just compresses down and it folds just like this. So this will sit right inside here. We'll have it screwed in. And then when you open, lift up on the lid, it will spring open something like that. So what I'm gonna do is hold these as tight to the back as I can, as tight to the back like that. And then, and then with my other hand, I'm gonna hold just a three quarter inch block on top since that's what we have on the bottom of our tailor piece. So I'm just gonna hold it on top and I'm just gonna make it so that it's just right below flush with the top of this piece. You have to hold it compressed and you have to kind of hold this block on top. Somewhere just like that where it's just barely below it just so that uh, we don't have it too high or you can just do it just flush. Just make sure that it doesn't go above that level otherwise it will be floating slightly which also isn't a big deal if that happens but when i have that slightly below it make sure that it's even all the way across and then you're just going to pull this off and then so you can either hold it with your one hand and then do your best to screw it with your other hand or you can just mark out uh, where the screws go and then pre-drill it and then screw them in but we're gonna put one on both sides and unfortunately these things do, don't come with hardware or i mean they don't come with screws so i got some uh number eight three quarter inch screws uh you're gonna need uh 22 screws make sure that they're quarter inch so that they are uh, not gonna go through the wall the edges so let's go ahead and get these things screwed on All right, so right now I just have these things on here, which is two screws in the middle, um, but it's enough to hold them in place so that we can get the top screwed on. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit tricky, but the way that I'm gonna do this is I just got a, a little piece of scrap, and what I'm gonna do is just hold it so that it's uh, flush with this top edge, and then I'm gonna measure off of this side 3 eighths of an inch because I cut the pieces on the bottom of the tabletop so that we'd have three eighths of an inch on either side. So I'm gonna measure three eighths of an inch and then on the bottom of this thing, I'm gonna mark right where the edge of the bracket is, right there. I'll mark it on the bottom of this. So then that way I'll know what the distance has to be from the back of the bracket to from the back of this piece to where the back of this needs to go. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. Uh, it should be the same measurement, but double check it just to be safe. And then once we have those measurements, then I'm just gonna set the tabletop on top of these. And then I'll just measure, I'll go ahead and mark the pieces on the bottom of this so that we know where those are supposed to be. And then from there, we just gotta line it up from left to right and make sure that it is you know, going along these parallel and then make sure that it's an equal distance so that it will fit down here and then once I got it lined up and I got it where I think I need it to be uh, same with the sides I'm just gonna put like I'll just put two screws in on either side just so that's enough to hold it and then I'll uh, test it to make sure that it fits and make sure that it's not rubbing and then after I test it then I, I'll go ahead and uh, finish putting in the screws. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, just take your time with it and uh, let's go ahead and get this thing screwed on. All right, so I finished screwing this thing off and then I went ahead and just slipped that bottom piece in there. Uh, you can like nail or screw this thing in if you want to, 
But I think I'm just gonna leave it the way it is because uh, it's really not gonna move around at all. And then it's just something that you can uh, easily take apart if you want to, but it shouldn't really be a problem. And you're gonna have to put it in there kind of at an angle. That's what I had to do. I had to put it in crooked and then just lay it down once it was all the way in there. But this top piece, uh, it's a little bit wobbly. You have to use both hands and then lift them up and try to do it kind of at the same time. And then when you pull it down, you have to kind of do it at the same time because it can be kind of wobbly if you're not, you know, moving them both kind of with each other. Uh, I still think it's a great way to do it. I just, you just have to keep that in mind. But this was kind of the best way that I could come up with to make this work. Uh, if anybody else has any ideas on uh, how to make this better or how to make this smoother, I would love to hear them. Uh, there wasn't really great places to put hinges just because, uh, just because like on the back, you know, you would have had to put hinges that either came out to the very edge. Um, and then there's not a lot of room here. So I did look at a few different hinge ideas and I couldn't really come up with a great way to make any of them work. So this was kind of the best I could come up with. But like I said, I'd love to hear your guys' input. Uh, you guys always have great ideas. So I really appreciate those. And then one last thing that I'm gonna do, uh, this part is optional, but I'm gonna cut another, uh, I'm gonna take one of my one by three scraps and just cut a block to fit between these two middle pieces. Uh, I'll just line it up with them and then I'll just um, screw it in there. And then what I'm gonna do is take this uh, 3 16 inch metal rod here. I got this from Home Depot and actually use this in one of my other videos also. And I'm just gonna make a really simple locking mechanism. So I'll screw this piece in here. Like I said, flush with where these end and then I'll shut it. And then right in the center here, I'll take a quarter inch drill bit and then I'll drill through this and into that block. And then uh, make sure you don't drill all the way through that block. You just wanna drill maybe like an inch into it. And then I'll take this rod and I'll put it in the hole as far as it'll go and then I'll mark it so that uh, I can cut it off flush so that it's not sticking out past this, but it's just set in there. What you can do is use the magnet, then that way uh, you can very easily just pull the rod out and then that will unlock it just so that if you have kids, your kids aren't accidentally opening this thing. So it's a pretty cheap and simple way to uh, have a locking mechanism. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that rod put in there. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how this works. So I got my little rod piece cut off in there and it's flush so you can't you can't pull it out or nothing. The lid is won't open and I just take my magnet and then pull it out like that. And then obviously once that's out, you can open it up. Um, so this is how long my piece is and it seems to go in there plenty. So that's just a super simple and easy way to uh, have this thing somewhat childproof just so that it doesn't just easily open on itself. And then, like I said, you can just take a magnet and just, you know, if you just want to put it in a corner down here or uh, if you had like a flower pot on here, you could find somewhere to put it on that or you could even put a magnet inside this thing and then you could put a, another magnet uh, on the bottom side of it and then that way it, it could just be uh, just hanging on the bottom here and then you could just grab it and quickly and easily get it opened up and then also you want to make sure that you uh, file off or sand off the edges on your uh, piece of metal here just so you don't cut yourself I just take a piece of sandpaper and just rub the edges around real good on that and then you should be good to go and the last thing that you got to do is to just fill it up with some cool stuff. Uh, it's pretty roomy in there and there's plenty of room to take things out and put things in. Uh, this is a pistol, so it's got a little bit of a shorter barrel on it, but a full length 
a 16 inch barrel i can show you real quick that will also fit just fine plenty of room uh, you shouldn't be like bumping on anything uh please use your own caution with how you store your firearms and uh just make sure that safety is a priority especially if you have kids in the house but that's pretty much it for you if you guys enjoyed the video please like and subscribe uh, I'd love to hear any other video recommendations that you guys might have. I'll go ahead and link anything that I used in the description. Also, like I said before, I'd love to hear uh, any advice that you guys would have on how to make this thing cooler or better. But with that being said, uh, thank you everyone so much for watching. And please have a great day and please stay safe. Yeah.